Welcome to the Coding Loft, my name is Samuel and in today's video you will learn how to parse CSV files in your React project with TypeScript. So if you have CSV data in your project and you want to use it as a JavaScript object, this is the tutorial for you. So as you can see in our case right here, we have this large recipe database file that holds all of these different recipes and this is already the final output where we have parsed the CSV to JavaScript and then display it in our project. Without further ado, let's get started. As you can see, we have a very bare bone setup right here. It's just a bare bone app with a heading one and heading three. And what we will focus on is the data right here in our root folder. In this data folder, we have a CSV file called recipe database which contains a lot of different information about recipes from an online cooking school. Now what we want inside of our app, we want to use this as the main data to then loop through the data and work with the different values that we get in this CSV file. So we start by setting a state variable, which is called data in our case, and a callback function called setData, which can then change this data property. And we will get it by calling the useState hook right here. And when I click it, it will automatically import our useState hook from React at the top. And since this is a TypeScript project, we need to define the types. So we say that our data is an array by specifying an empty array right here. And then we also want to specify the type, the input type that we can have, which in our case is an array that can contain data of any type. In our case, this will be an object. Now, how do we parse the CSV data to be used as a JavaScript object or array? For that, there's a handy little library that you can install that is called Papa Parse. So you will need to run this command npm i Papa Parse to install it in your project. So I copy it to my clipboard, open the terminal, and then install it inside of the project. So now we can use it inside of our React project. And now as the next step, we want to create a reusable function that allows us to input any CSV file that we have in our project and convert it to a JavaScript object. Now for that, we want to create a new use fetch hook and we will save it right here in our source folder in a new folder called hooks. And in here, we will create a new file, which is called usefetch.tsx. And here we will create our use fetch hook. So we say const fetch equals a callback function and at the end we want to export our use fetch hook. Now inside of here we want to create a function that allows us to fetch the data from the CSV file. So we'll call this const fetch CSV data and this is an asynchronous function. So we need to wait for the result to arrive. And here inside of our use fetch function, we always want to return an object with all of the different functions that we define in here. So in our case, we want to return the fetch CSV data function so we can then later import it inside of our app. Now this fetch CSV data function will take in two arguments. One is the file path. So in our case, we want to tell the program where in our project it can find this CSV file. And this file path is of type string, so that's easy. And then we want to run a callback function, which in our case will be the setData function that we have in our app.typescript file. And for this, we also need to specify a type, which is the type callback that we define in just a moment. So up here, we say type callback and we say callback is a function that returns nothing because it just sets a value. And this callback function can have any data input type. So now to recap this fetch CSV data function, first of all, it wants to know the path, where is our CSV file, and then it wants to know a function, what do we want to do with the CSV data that we get. Now, first of all, we want to get a response because we will use the fetch function and the fetch function is asynchronous. So that's why we have an asynchronous function right here. And we say, whenever we await what the fetch function returns, we save it in this variable called response and we want to return whatever it gets from file path. Then we create a variable called reader and we get this from our response object from the body of it. And in there we have a method called getReader. So as you can see TypeScript complains and the reason is that response.body is possibly null. So in order to avoid that, we can use the exclamation mark here which is the non-null assertion 
basically meaning that whenever our body is not null, then we can call the getReader method. And then we get a result by saying we await whatever reader returns when we call the read method. Then we have a decoder variable, which is basically a new instance of the text decoder class. And in here we specify the type that we want to decode. So in our case it's UTF-8. And last but not least, we get our CSV string by saying decoder.decode. And then it should decode result.value. And again, you can add the exclamation mark here to assert that this is not null. Now, so far we have not used the papa parse library. That's what will happen next when we get a data object back from the papa parse library. So we need to say papa.parse. But of course, we first need to import it because as you can see, it cannot find the name papa yet. We haven't imported this library yet. So up here we simply say import papa from papa parse. And you see it complains that it doesn't find this module. So we'll run this command npm i dash dash save dash dev and then add types slash papa parse. And now I can see we don't have this problem anymore, but now it complains down here because it says that it expects a couple of arguments. So let's do that next. So Papa Pass wants two things. First of all, it wants the CSV file, which in our case is the CSV string. The second argument is an object with different options. So header, we say true. Header basically means that the first row in our CSV file is the name of the columns. If it's set to false, then it will treat the first row already like the other rows. And then we have the dynamic typing option, which we also set to true. This will let Papa Parse infer the data inside of our CSV file. So for instance, whether it's a string or a number. And then last but not least, we want to call our callback function and pass this data array in here. So to summarize, we have a function called fetch CSV data, which takes two arguments, which is the file path and a callback function. The file path means where in our project it can find the CSV file. The callback function basically then allows us to use this data in different ways. In our case, we will use the setData function. So we get a response by fetching the data from the file path. We read the results from the response object. We and then we turn it into JavaScript data, which we can then insert as an argument inside of our callback function. So now inside of app to TypeScript, we can use this fetch CSV data method to fetch the data. So first of all, we need to import our use fetch function from hooks slash use fetch. And then we can get the fetch CSV data function from our use fetch hook. So in our case, we want to fetch this data the first time that we load our page. So we use the use effect hook. And again, it imports it up here in our object. So now we can use it and the use effect hook takes in a callback function. And at the end, uh, we specify an empty array, meaning that it runs the first time that we load the page. And in here, we then want to call this fetch CSV data function that we defined. So if you remember, we first need to specify a file path, which in our case is the root folder. Then we have a data folder in here, and then we have a recipe data base.csv file. And then the second argument is the callback function. So in our case, it's the set data function right here. So in order to see that this is working, we now can call our data and console.log it. And now I can see that we have this array of objects and each object is a recipe object that contains a lot of different information about the recipe. So now to see that this is working, we can then use the data array and we can map through it. So that means that for each recipe that we have in here, we can then return some HTML. So in our case, we can print the recipe name to the app. So in our case, we then call the recipe item. And in there, there is a property called recipe name. And now it should be printed to the screen. You can see all of the different recipe names right here. Now, the second part of this project, I actually want to sanitize the names of our 
CSV file because you can see that they are always written with capital letters, then sometimes they have space in between and sometimes a dash such as an image URL and instead I want to have everything in lowercase and with underscores in between. And the reason is very simple because when I want to access the properties of the item, I always have to use this bracket notation. I cannot use the dot notation simply because there is the space in here. So in order to do that, let's jump back to our use fetch hook. And right here, we want to create a new function called sanitize columns, which again is a function. And it takes in data of any type. So what we want to do is we want to again return data, but we want to change each item. And we use the dot map method to loop through each item. So in here we have an item of type any, and then we run a callback function. So in our case, our data is an array consisting of objects. So we map through the entire array and we look at each recipe object, which is then referred to as item. And instead of this item, we want to have a sanitized item. That's what we would then want to return to our data. And in the beginning, this is an empty object. Now what I want to do is I want to get all of the different names that we have right here, all of the different keys of this object. And the way you can get all of these keys is by saying object.keys of the current item. So this basically is an array that contains all of the different keys. Now the good thing about an array is we can loop through it. So we call it for each function and here we can work with each key. So for instance, in the first iteration, it will go over category, then over chef, then over comment, course number, and so on. So in this moment, we can then use each key and transform it a little bit. So we want to have a sanitized key and sanitized key is the current key. And what do we want to do to sanitize it? We want to call the dot to lower case method. So now the key is all lowercase and now we want to replace a couple of things. So we call the dot replace method and in here we can specify what we want to replace as the first argument and the second We want to replace it and it can be if there's one or two spaces one or two slashes right after each other that's this plus sign right here we want to replace those and the g flag here stands for global so this means that this should apply to all of the instances that we find so for instance if there are several spaces between several words we want all of them to be replaced with this underscore here Last but not least, we want to now fill our sanitized item object and we want to append to it the key, which is our sanitized key. And then the value should be whatever is currently in item with the current key. And you see that TypeScript complains up here. So when we define the sanitized item object right here, we need to tell it that it can have any types inside. And last but not least, we want to return this sanitized item. Now, how do we use this function? Down here, we want to create a new variable called sanitized data. And we sanitize the data by saying sanitize columns. And then we pass in the data that we got from our papa parse method right here. We pass it in here. And instead of putting the data as the argument, we want to add in this sanitized data right here. And now we can see it has sanitized the column names. So all of them are now a lowercase and we have the underscores in between the words. So no matter if there was a dash before or a space, we now always have an underscore. And that means that down here, I could say recipe dot recipe name, for instance. And now you can see that it allows us to access all of these properties by using this dot notation right here. So that is how you can very simply parse a CSV file in your React and TypeScript project and then work with it as a regular JavaScript object. So in our case, we get back an array that consists of different recipe objects.
If you did like this video, please leave a like and a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Also, I would love to hear from you. Do you find this useful? In what kind of project are you parsing CSV files? And what other questions would you have about React and TypeScript? Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.